turn in your copy of God's Word to, to Luke chapter 7. We actually get two parts of the journey through the Gospel of Luke this week. Luke's Gospel chapter 7, Luke's Gospel chapter 7, verse number 31. If you're able, when you get there, would you stand with me as we honor God in the reading of His Word? Jesus is speaking here and He says, To what then should I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to each other. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a lament, but you did not weep. For John the Baptist did not come eating bread or drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. May God add his blessing to the reading and now the preaching and teaching of his word for his people to hear and understand. May Jesus Christ, our Savior, forever be praised and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me ask you something. How many of you ever played church when you were little kids? Anybody play church when you were little kids? I remember playing church very fondly. uh, This was in that time before Xboxes and iPads and and all this stuff, and you were told, go entertain yourself. And I think that was a good thing. I think that taught kids how to be creative and how to use their minds and imaginations. I think that was a good thing. Anyway, I remember playing church when I was a kid. We would come home from church, and we would all go to Grandma, Memo and Papa's for lunch. And, uh, of course, the kids would get through eating lunch, and, and the grown-ups are going to sit around and sit around the table and talk big talk for you know, a good hour, hour and a half. That's what they do, right? And uh, so we kids had to entertain ourselves. So we had just come from church. So me and Jay and BJ, we, we played church. And, and we had this little thing that sort of looked like a pulpit. And we would get there and, and uh, we would, uh, as a matter of fact, it, it was backwards. I believe that Jay was the preacher and I was the song leader. And uh, so we, we would just have a good old time. We would play church. And, and that's a common thing for, for kids. And, and I think that kids still do that today. Do they not, Pastor Eric? I think... Maybe Evan tries to, he, he, he does that as well. That's great. There you go, training up a new generation. But you probably, if, you, if you're a child, you played church, you might have, did you ever have a, a mock wedding? Did you play weddings and, and somebody's the bride and somebody's the groom? And, and see, some of you are nodding like that. And Hank says, I ain't never done that. If you had girl cousins that you had to be around, the, the girl cousins would come up with that idea and that they wouldn't play your game unless you played their game. So you had to go back and forth. But, and they would have mock weddings, and I've even heard stories, I never did this, of, of a mock funeral. Well, well, yeah, we did. Not a mock funeral, but you'd bury the goldfish or, or the hamster or whatever. And th- so these, these are things that children would still today do, and they would have done back then in Jesus' day. And so Jesus tells this parable, and the parable is a picture of children playing wedding or funeral. They look there in uh, verse number 32. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang a lament, but you didn't weep. This is a picture of children who are who are playing wedding, play a flute for you and you would not dance. Well, that's what they would have done in the Jewish weddings. We sang a lament for you, but you didn't weep. That They sang laments in Jewish funerals. And so little Jewish boys and girls, when they got bored and, and there, wasn't, there were no chores to do, they would have done things like this, play wedding and, uh, or play funeral. And, and they would have sung the songs that would have been sung in a wedding or a funeral. They would have acted out, acted out all of... These things. Now, you've got to understand that parable to get the teaching here. So you can see little Jewish boys and girls doing like little boys and girls in our generation, your generation did, and, and playing church, right? A wedding or a funeral. But Jesus says, we played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang a lament, but you didn't weep. And he's speaking in this parable particularly about a specific group of people. He says in verse 32, To what 
then should I compare the people of this generation? What generation is he speaking of? What group of people specifically are, is he making the parable about? We'll look one verse up, verse 30. We looked at this verse this morning. Verse 30, But since the Pharisees and experts in the law had not been baptized by him, they rejected the plan of God for themselves. To what then should I say to compare the people of this generation? Who are the people that he's talking about? The scribes and the Pharisees. The Pharisees and the lawyers of verse 30. That is who he's making the comparison in the parable about. The parable is about the Pharisees and lawyers specifically who had rejected the teachings of John the Baptist. And the lawyers and Pharisees who had specifically rejected the teachings of Jesus. They had rejected both of them. These people were self-satisfied. They were satisfied with their man-made religion. And they were satisfied with their man-made systems of power. And they were satisfied with their man-made rules and regulations. They were satisfied with it because they were the ones in control of it. And so when the message came from John the Baptist, repent and have repent of your sins, have faith in God, they wanted nothing to do with it. And when Jesus takes up the same message that John the Baptist is preaching, repent of your sins, have faith in God, the Pharisees and lawyers wanted nothing to do with it. And so Jesus tells this parable. And in the parable we see two voices or two groups of people speaking. And one group of people is speaking about John the Baptist, parenthetically, and another is speaking about Jesus. When he says about the group of children who said, We sang a lament, but you didn't weep. The children who were being somber, like the funeral, they were comparing the message, Jesus was comparing that to the message of John the Baptist. John the Baptist lived an ascetic lifestyle, um, John would have been comparative to the Amish of today. Uh, he did not want any of the frills of modern life. Now, of course, modern life, not the modern life today, but what modern life would have been back in the first century A.D. He would have eschewed the modern frills of life. He, would have, he didn't want anything to do with the contemporary things going on. He would have been very much like the Amish. He, he, he had you know, the camel hair clothes he wore. A locust and honey is all I need. Probably live in a cave somewhere. And uh, people would be glad he baptized people in the Jordan River because that's probably the only bath he got. So he lived an ascetic. He would have been like Grizzly Adams out there in the wilderness. He lived a life that was purposefully separated from society. And John would not have been the only one of that day who would have done that. There were whole communities of ascetic people who lived separate from the society at large, sort of like the Amish do today. Uh, the Essenes who came along on the scene a couple of decades after John the Baptist, maybe you're familiar with them, the, the Essenes and the Qumran community, and, and if you know any of the uh, Middle Eastern history, you've heard of some of them. So he's compared to the children singing a, a lament. Because he's the serious guy. And he's this guy who's sort of stern and, and, and quite frankly, quite harsh, John the Baptist is. And his mas message was very simple. Repent of your sins, have faith in God. When he went to the courts of the king, he preached, repent of your sins, have faith in God. When the poor folks gathered around him, he preached, repent of your sins, have have faith in God. When he went to the nursing home, he preached, repent of your sins, have faith in God. When he was called to the school assembly to give a motivational talk, he preached, repent of your sins, have faith in God. When he went to the union meeting, he preached, repent of your sins, have faith in God. He preached the same message wherever he went. And the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected him. Look what, he, what Jesus says here, verse 33, for John the Baptist did not come eating bread or drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. They called him names. They made up stories about him. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. They turned their nose up at him. 
when they saw crowds of people going out to the wilderness, out to the Jordan River, and they would ask them, where are you going? And they would say, we're going out to hear John the Baptist. They'd turn their nose up. Huh, I wouldn't go out there. You couldn't pay me to go out and hear that sorry preacher. They didn't like him. Serious guy. Amish-like guy. Separated guy. Different from all the people in ordinary society. But then he says, previous to that, we, we played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. Talking about the children who would have been playing the wedding. They were talking about Jesus. He was talking about himself. And Jesus was, I don't want to say lighter than John. But we read in the Gospels, and particularly in John, we get some of Jesus' emotion and and uh, his interaction with the folks. And probably the best way to put it is John the Baptist would not have been a fun guy to be around. Jesus, if you were his friend, his, his family, his associates, his disciples, we get the impression that Jesus would have been a fun guy to be around. In many of the parables, we, we pick up hints at Jewish humor. Jesus would have been somebody that you would have liked to spend time with. John the Baptist, probably not so much. Jesus was, was middle class guy, middle society guy. Just sort of, it, it sounds sacrilegious to say this, but in the earthly sense. Say in the earthly sense, so you understand it. In the earthly sense, in the earthly sense, Jesus was an average guy. Not in the divine sense, I'm not, this is not blaspheming. But in the earthly sense, he was an average, everyday, middle class, middle society kind of guy. He was sociable. He accepted the invitations to dinner parties, even if the invitation came from sinners. Even if the invitation came from the most hated people, like tax collectors. Sure, I'll go. And Jesus said... We played the flute for you, and you didn't dance. Jesus said, verse 34, The Son of Man, I, the Son of Man, has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He was rejected also by the Pharisees and the lawyers. He was rejected by them just like John the Baptist was rejected by them. John the Baptist was rejected. He was a stern and somber guy. Jesus was rejected. And he was a sociable, average guy. He says, we sang, we played the flute for you and you wouldn't dance for us. We, we, we put out the, the, the joyous celebration like a wedding and you wouldn't come. Remember this, there's some, I believe, foreshadowing here. Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is the bride of Christ. The bride that he calls will come. Well, guess what then Jesus' message was? Jesus' message was, repent of your sins and have faith in God. That sounds familiar, huh? Jesus was preaching the same message that John the Baptist was preaching. And we get this when we get to this point in the Gospels where John the Baptist is beheaded. Before John the Baptist is beheaded, executed, we see him preaching. John the Baptist is preaching, repent of your sins, have faith in God. And then we read in the next chapter, John the Baptist is beheaded. And in the next verses we read, and Jesus then began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent of your sins, have faith in God. You see these two very different people. And they're preaching the same message. And here's what Jesus is condemning <coughs> the Pharisees <coughs> and the lawyers for. Because they heard the message from John the Baptist and they rejected it. They heard the message from Jesus and they rejected it. it and he was in, in effect saying, it would not matter who you hear this message from. Same message wrapped in different clothes. It doesn't matter who you hear this message from. Repent of your sins, have faith in God. You'll not receive it. Because you have a hardened heart. And you are self-satisfied. You are so full of yourself that you think the religion that you're following and you've made up and you get to control is all that you need. But when, what you really need to do is 
Repent of your sins. Have faith in God. Repent of your sins. Have faith in God. They made fun of Jesus like they made fun of John the Baptist. They said, well, this man's a drunkard. He's a glutton. He's a friend of, he's a friend of sinners and tax collectors. Oh, so-and-so had a party, a dinner party last night. And Jesus went to it. I wouldn't be caught dead in that person's house. But I saw Jesus walking in there. And he wasn't walking down the back alley. He just walked right through the front door. Huh. Stick their nose up in there. <laughs> that drunkard. That must, he must be. I bet he's a glutton too. Who in the world would ever go eat with tax collectors and sinners? Well, Jesus went and ate with tax collectors and sinners. And, and you know what? He told them the same message that he told everybody else. Repent of your sins. Have faith in God. And so Jesus says in verse 35, Yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. So what do we do with that? It's got to be connected to the rest of it. I think it's this. Jesus was saying to these Pharisees and lawyers, You're not wise. You rejected the message when it came from John the Baptist. You rejected the message when it, came, when it came from me. But those who are wise have heard the message and received it. Repent of your sins, have faith in God. And this wisdom will be vindicated by her children. The children of the wise are those who understood the parable. There are different voices proclaiming the message of the kingdom of God. Different voices, same message. The message is the same. Repentance of sin, faith in God. So here's the question, and I'll close. The last verse, yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The title of the sermon is Wisdom's Children. Do you vindicate wisdom? Are you one of wisdom's children, the wise who understood and applied the parable by obeying the message, repent of your sins, have faith in God, or do you, like the Pharisees and lawyers, reject it? Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight that we have heard your message and I believe, Lord, that your word is sufficient. That it speaks. That your Holy Spirit works. So now, Lord, we believe that you will accomplish your will through this word.